Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Copper TV. Today's show brings you Steve Heathcock and Lawson Smith who are going to talk to us about the Children in Need song that they've written. Adam Conteray also joins us again to give us an update on Operation Christmas Child. And then to finish off, we have a beautiful vintage clothing from Nikki Forte from the Vintage Vanity. guests are Steve Heathcock and Lawson Smith, writers of the new Children in Need song. They're here to, here to talk about this great cause and what they're doing to support it. Welcome guys, Steve and Lawson, thank Hi. you so much for morning, joining me Micah. on Copper TV. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And aren't we looking very dapper today, we gentlemen? Are, well, I thought, yeah, I make, an <laughs> make an effort. <laughs> quite right. Absolutely. Uh, so, TV, oh, well, this is it. Well, quite right. Absolutely. So, um, Lawson, I'm going to start with you right. because you actually met, didn't you, at um, Britain's Got Talent, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So that's tell true. us, how, how did that come about? Uh, we were just standing in the, in the queue at uh, Britain's Got Talent waiting for the auditions um, and I seen Steve in front of me he was talking making his way like backwards through through the crowd like talking to people and we just hit it off I uh, showed him a couple of my hip-hop videos which I've got on YouTube um, and we got talking and that was it really because yeah, I mean, you're a rapper aren't you yeah you're a rap artist and Steve you used to say you're in the queue yeah I mean uh, well I, you can probably tell I'm a talker so I was <laughs> talking to everybody but look there was something about Lawson we just clicked uh, instantly like you know and I spoke to him basically the whole time we were there which was like two or three hours wasn't it? Yeah. and they were like exchange I showed him I did an England video for yeah. the World Cup uh, 2010 and he, uh, that was on Centre News yeah. and different stuff yeah and then uh, and then of course you just found yourself collaborating yeah, well, so what yeah. did you do did you did you see each other again through the process because we just what, kept, we just what kept in happened touch. what happened we, we, well we kept in touch and I had this idea about children in need mm. song but because Lawson's modern you know, like Eminem, Professor Green, <laughs> that type of thing. Down with the kids, if you like. Yes. I thought it'd be more a commercial spin, and it might yeah. sell the song better. Getting somebody who's, yeah. you know, more modern. I mean, I sing stuff like the Kinks and, you know, stuff like that. You know. So that collaboration then was that good for you, Lawson? Did you think that that would work? Yeah, because it's something I've never done before. Um, it's something new to me. Obviously, Steve being like into rock music and me collaborating with a rocker is something that's out mm. of my box, if you like. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's been. But a sometimes good it's good to do that, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah. Just so, so what happened on the Britain's Got Talent, guys? I've got to ask. Well, we what didn't happened? get through. Uh, <laughs> 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 to be honest, I think I picked the wrong song. Uh, she, she did say, "Give me some advice," and they told me not to give up. Um, carry on, it's good, but not quite yeah. yet. And, how about and they said to me, I did Footloose, uh, you know, yeah. from because I, yes. I, I do the clubs and yeah. I said, you're a great entertainer, Steve. Denise and, yeah. Williams, thank yeah, you. Yeah, and they yeah. said, you'll, you'll, you'll do well in the clubs, but you're not quite yeah. today, like, yeah. you know. But, I, but I you're it, here today. Yeah. We're just here it, today. Yeah. The only, something that Trump, I mean, I haven't been for an audition for years, so that's, that's uh, because I'm more or less, because I'm out on the clubs anyway, I sing every weekend. Yeah. So, you know, but my girlfriend said, go for it, and that's why I met Lawson. Yeah. So sometimes things are meant to happen yes, that's for right. a reason. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because I probably hadn't been for an audition for... 10 years, yeah. and X Factor or something was probably the last one I did 10 years ago. Something and like for that. you, Lawson, tell us a little bit about your career. Uh, my career started uh, a few years ago, I'd say, well, a few, uh, about eight years back. Mm. I was in a hip hop group, we split. Um, is I that based here in the West Midlands? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I'm actually from Bilston, so we're based around that way. Um, I started rapping, producing mm. there for the, for the group. Um, we split up, and I just, you know, started doing gigs up and down the country. Um, I've opened up in Los Angeles. Uh, last year um, and obviously I've just won uh, Open Mic UK so I'm down in Southampton this week. Well, congratulations. Uh, talking, thank you. Um, talking about development deals and stuff so it's yeah. going pretty well. And is, it, is, is rap music really important to you? Oh yes, yeah, my life. I've been listening to it you know since mm. as far as back as I can remember early 80s you know so. Uh, and was it something was you were interested in? Uh, well, I, I appreciate all forms of music, but the more I've been working with Lawson, the more I appreciate it, if you know what I mean. Because Lawson's a very good lyricist. So it's very poetical, yeah, rap, yeah. isn't it? Often um, rappers are poets. Yeah, you know, that's and, what they see. Yeah, it? and it's really just an expression, isn't and it? And it's like yeah, stories, it's within stories. Yes, like, you know? yes, that's right. So and, uh, and for you, Steve, tell us about your career. Well, I've been singing about 20 years, like, you know, uh, old time, you know, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I started in bands. Uh, duos and different stuff. I mean, I met Mel B. I, I, I got to the last 50 or 50,000 mm -hmm. of a talent show, 2001. And, uh, but I've always kept in music. And then I, I released that yes, in 2010. That's based on my own life, The Cynic. 
you know, the, the title track from mm. that uh, is based on myself. And how do you think, guys, for both of you, the music industry is at the moment, Orson, how do you see the music industry in the UK? Uh, in the UK, for, for my genre, it's tough, very tough. Why uh, do you think that is? I think the, the way that music is constantly changing in the UK. You know, it's hard to keep up with one genre. Like, you, you go into hip hop and then one minute it's the big thing and then, you know, you think, oh, I've got this album ready, it's going to make, and then by the time you've pushed it, the genre's changed. So it's gone to, like, dance music. And do you through. find that, you know, the sort of social media and, I mean, you know, the various radio stations do open mics and they do, you know, um, young enterprise schemes where, you know, people can just send in their music. Do you think that's a good thing? Do you think, are we, are we having too much music on, this, you know, social media and it's all downloadable now? So do you think that's too much or do you think that's a benefit to the music industry? Uh, I think it, need, it's, it needs a balance. Uh, I think there is a, a too much downloading f through Facebook and Twitter and stuff and it's easy access whereas back in the 90s or whatever you know you have to actually go physically and buy that CD if you wanted to listen to that artist mm. Mm. You know, so and what would you think about that Steve? yeah I think Lawson's got a good point there you know because uh, it is good for new artists I love, yes. I love to see new people but you know you see people breaking through on YouTube like Ed Sheeran people like, people yes. like that you know so mm. it is a good thing but as Lawson said it's a balance mm. and it's yeah. and it is harder because uh, like in like, like from the 80s you had to actually sell physical copies of CDs like mm. Lawson was saying like you know to get in the charts. Because yeah. how like for your fans Lawson do they buy physical CDs or is it mostly downloadable? Uh, it's, it's mostly downloadable okay. they, you will get the odd person if the CD you know they know the artist mm. is really good they will actually purchase the CD. Mm. And how about for you Steve? Uh, I've done physical and downloads yeah. mainly downloads yes. now. Like, yeah. you know. I mean this single's going to be downloaded. Children. I was going to say so let's yeah. talk about the single then so Children in Need yeah, yeah. a fantastic yeah. cause of course you know that's going to be in November, November so yeah. tell us about what you've been doing. Well, we've been working with Barry Towns mm -hmm. Uh, so it's going to be released on Gotham Records on November the 6th or something? Yeah, November the yeah. 6th. So uh, we're busy promoting. Wonderful. Yeah. And tell us about the song. We, we haven't, you're doing the video because we can't show yeah, that to them, yeah, unfortunately, no, but uh, you're going to come back. Yeah, the video was shot by 3.3 uh, TV from Birmingham. That's, mm -hmm. that's released next week. Uh, and we've got YD. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, she's been on the show, DK Lee. Yeah, yeah she's yeah, been yeah. here. In fact, she's got her own show on Big Sense yeah, TV, I mean, yeah. so that's great. So she's a supporting it then for you. Yeah, she's well, I think yeah. that's going to be beneficial for us, I mean, because she's obviously established then she as well. Yeah. You can't yeah. do us any harm by being D on board. No, so. absolutely. So, uh, and what about the song itself? Is it is it rap? Is it, it's how? a mix, isn't it's it? A mix, it's a mix of both. It's worked, really. Yeah. It's worked because it's like the instrumental for the, for the actual single is a dancey kind of where and then you've got Steve who's like the rock type and then me the rapper so it's all yeah. gelled Because we're teasing well, our viewers like today because <laughs> obviously we can't show anything today yeah, yeah. but you know um, you will come back of course of and, course, and yeah, show us sure. the video when it's done. So so as far as the single's concerned though is that finished now? Have you? Is it? Yeah the single's yeah, that's finished. finished. All compiled, yeah. all and ready uh, to go. And Bally's uh, promoting it for mm -hmm. us as well Lork, at the moment. Wonderful. And I'm sending that to radio shows as well yeah. everything as well. Lork, you know. And what, what's the expectations of it for you both? Uh, just to raise as much money as possible. Obviously, we're not making anything from it. We don't want anything from it. Yeah, it's all for the kids. For it's all for mm -hmm. the kids. So, mm -hmm. you know, any anybody who wants to donate or down, download it, you know, uh, I don't know how much it's going to be at the moment. But uh, everything goes to but charity. It's been decided. All, yeah. of the, all of the proceeds will go to charity. Yeah. And why did you pick that charity, Steve? Well, I had a tough childhood, to be honest. I mean, I wasn't kid. I was in trouble with the... You know, sometimes you get in with the wrong crowd. You know, and... Uh, so that was important to you. It was important, you, like, you know. To, to give and, back. Uh, well, there was nothing like children need in my day, was there, like, you know, mm -hmm. so if it, so everybody needs a mentor or somebody to say, you know something, this kid's all right, mm -hmm. you know, there was nobody there. Yeah. I've had to, like, I'm a survivor, you know, I've had to f make my own way through, but some of these kids, yeah, you know, they don't. They don't, they don't today, so. But yeah. with someone like children need, they get a chance. Yeah. And was it important for you, Dawson, as well? Yeah, it is, you know, um, my, my niece, you know, uh, she passed away a few years ago, and, you know, Birmingham Children's Hospital, they helped, and that we donated a lot of money that went to mm. that so you know everybody's mm. got a little piece of you know mm. children in need somewhere along the line yeah. they, I guess yeah and I mean so for the for the video so the video what's tell us about that that's very exciting so that's going to be obviously we're going to have it, D it Kelly in it uh, is it going to be filmed where in in Birmingham or uh, everything in Stourbridge a bit local mm. yeah. a bit more local mm -hmm. to, to Steve you know because he, he was the guy that come up with the track so yes. it's only fair you know, so uh, you know, we're just looking for some videos at the moment, and we're looking. Yeah. But we're going to get some kids involved. Yes. Obviously, because yes. that's the theme, and it's 
And I'm going to have a bit of light hearted as well, we said, don't we? Like, you know, with yeah. balloons. And yeah. so you've got obviously. Because it's a song that yeah. you want, obviously, people yeah. to buy yeah. and, and to use. We're, and we're only to rem be remembered other than just for children in need, you know, maybe those, yeah. you know, a couple of months yeah. after it. Right. Right. Why do you think, I mean, Children in Need is, you know, a very big charity here in the UK, and quite rightly so. Sure. Um, it, it, why do you think it has such a popular appeal? Well, I think everybody's got a love for kids, and they like, you know, like, they want to see the best charity begins at home, doesn't it? Mm. I believe, and, uh, you know, I think it's one of, probably one of the best charities mm. out there at the moment, yeah. isn't it? It always has been, I yeah. think, yeah. I mean, it seems to get bigger every year as well, doesn't it? Yes, yes. And they make more L and more there's every a lot of, There's a lot of yeah. people involved with Children in Need, you yes. know, you know. And I think a lot of big artists are, are involved with it now. So, of course, yeah, you know, once names go, well, you've got a big artist in your video. No, so that's going to that's gonna be good. We're having I'm our very own I've not met there yet, yeah. but I'm excited. Are you uh, very excited about yeah, that? Yeah, about that. Well, I watched Benefit Street and then she was, a, you know, I was saying to Barry, you see some people on the telly and you just know they're going to do other stuff. And she's a prime example. Yeah, and she's one of those. Yeah, she's yeah. a... And she's amazing, and she's got a story to tell, hasn't she? Yes, I mean, I think when you and that's good for the, for you yeah. as a rapper because yeah. you tell stories, also, don't you, that's in your it, music? Yeah. So how does that how does that work for you? Uh, I can obviously I tell my own life stories, but I, it's it's like like reading a book. You know, somebody tells me me being like you know the producer of the book mm. or the author of the book. They tell me their story, and I could portray that into writing. You know, in that sense. Because you produce like your own um, yeah, produce work as well, don't you? Beats. I've got my own studio at home. Mm. Uh, everything, you know, is all owned by me, so mm. I get no help from no one. And what's music. your ambition? Just to uh, be known, whether it be, you know, uh, up here or down mm. here, just for people to say, yeah, I'd like his music, I've got, you know, I'll support that. That's yeah. all I want. You could do a know. rap song together. Yeah, we could log like, you know. There we are, you see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. We could do a rap song together. And for you, Steve? Well, I'm, I'm out performing every weekend. Yes. I mean, uh, so you perform all over, yeah, don't you? Yeah, all over the West mm. Midlands and everything. They call me the showman, because obviously, mm. uh, if you come and see me live, mm. I'm here, there and everywhere. Yeah. But I'm a proper entertainer. Because, you know, a, a lot of singers now, I mean, Lawson's probably slightly because he's oh, keep up on that, but you, mm. on the circuit, you know, like the, the stuff I sing, My Girl and Elvis and all that, a lot of singers where we in interact with the audience, whereas I do. Mm. I think that's that's important. Do you important. think that's important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I get a lot of gigs. I think. Mm. Do you do you agree? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I because agree again, um, rappers do t t tend to engage with the audience just because of the nature of the, yeah, yeah. Of the, of yeah. the song, of course, yeah. and the way that they sing it. And is it something, guys? Would you ever consider sort of going out and doing some kind of gigs together? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got lots of yeah, to a few gigs, and uh, but we're not about maybe doing this song. Together as well, yes, or, you know, yeah, the and then do seconds. some, yeah, do some gigs with this song, with the song, yeah, yeah, yeah which would be great. Yeah. We're not about maybe collaborating on other stuff as well, because yeah. obviously, when you do one song, mm. we work, you know, we want to see how this yeah. does, obviously, but then maybe do some other stuff. Is it, if there's one person you could choose who you'd like to collaborate with, who would it be, Steve? For me, it's something yeah. like Paul Weller. I mean, because yeah. uh, you know, I mean, that's the music I grew up on, and or Glenn Tilbrook, you know, that squeeze. Like and that. how about for you, Nelson? Yeah, and there's many artists for me, yeah. uh, never ending, you know, somebody like Ice Cube or something mm. would be really good. Just somebody know. that you yeah. really sort of feel that for. Have, you know, got me into the yes. listening to their music. You yeah. Know, that'd be a dream. Like, and I mean, know. that's the wonderful thing about music, though, isn't it? Because it brings you both together. I mean, you're both completely different genres, but yeah, you've absolutely. come together yeah. and, and formed this amazing collaboration. Um, to do something a, a very good for a That's very good okay. cause, which is you know the wonderful thing about music, of course. That's right. I mean, it, it, and if you hadn't ago, stood in that queue, That's uh, absolutely. You know. well, three months ago, we was just like sat in Lawson's bedroom putting the, the track together mm. in the first place, and now we're here today with yes, you. Yes, talking talking about and, it. And you know, yeah. pressing everything. Yeah. It seems to be like. And what do you hope with this single? What do you hope? What the, what are the hopes for the single when it comes out? That people like it, and you know that they'll support it. You know. And download it, and hopefully make a lot of money for the kids. Mm. I mean, that's you know, to, see, uh, to see the track for you know for the effort that we've put into it. You know, just not another track. Yeah. Oh, these two guys that have you know we've put a lot of work in. Yeah. We're trying to push it. You yeah. know, so just yeah. hope they they see the work in it. Basically, maybe they can they might take note of it themselves. You know, the well, people. Well, I, I hope so. I mean, you, you just yeah, inspire people. Maybe. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you could just change, make a difference to one person. You know, it makes. Uh, we it had. Makes I mean, we've we discussed mental health issues, for instance, on the show. Course, you yeah. know, and it's there's a there's you know it's it's a it's a huge problem with the young um, in the UK, and most of them have said that music actually can be a way that it actually helps. Would you agree with I, that? I do yeah. agree, Monica. Yeah. 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 I think it, uh, it's an outlet for a minute, like you know. Yeah. There should be a lot more places where kids could go, and you know, learn music. In my opinion, I don't think there's enough in the UK. Mm. Yeah, why do you think that is? Why do you think we've just let that sort of? Do you think it's something might be to do with funding, and it, which is bad. Funding and you know, um, 
I just think the scene there, America is the big place for music. You know, if you're not in America, then you're not gonna, you know, be as big and what, successful. What are your thoughts on that, though? I think that's, you know, in the UK, it's just as good. It's just, mm. you know, in a small knit community. We have Ed Sheeran. Yeah. We have Sam Smith. <laughs> we have Adele. We have you know, some great. Yeah, great and we've had some great artists in the past, of course. Of course you know, yeah, with the Beatles, and you know, there's a yeah. huge amount of artists, and in fact, a huge amount of artists that are musical that come from the West Midlands, of course. Absolutely. So well, you know, but it, it's it's wonderful that you've done what you're doing, and I think it's going to be you know really successful for you, and I really hope it you know Thank will you, be successful Appreciate for, for you. And um, and I want you to come back and and, yeah, and, yeah, and see how, who see who else can be in the video. Who else would you like to be in the video? Uh, I don't know, I think I'd like Lenny Henry because he has got oh, that, yes, that kind yeah, of, uh, yeah. you know. And he's from the West Midlands, yes, yeah, yeah. So if you're watching, Lenny. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, here it is. Oh, well, I wish you best of luck with it, guys. And you're going to come back, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah. come back and join us then when the video's done. So maybe sometime in November then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Maybe just we'll before it's released. Or Perfect. Yeah. that will be wonderful. Thank you very much for joining okay. me. Thank, Thank you. you. That's Thank great. you, Monica. So stay with us. We're going to take a quick break now and we'll come back and join us in just a minute. back to Cover TV. Now I'm joined by Adam from Operation Christmas Child and as you're probably aware Big Centre TV is supporting this fantastic charity and he's here to give us an update. Adam welcome back. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's great we've got the boxes on the yes. table. A very a very mm, peculiar looking box we'll talk about that in <laughs> yeah. a minute. Adam so again yeah. great to see you you've already been on and talked all about Operation Christmas yes. Child and of course Big Centre TV are supporting it which is wonderful. Straight, yeah, yeah. Um, so how's it going? What's been happening? Yeah. Wow well, it's going really well. Um, we're still in a stage of getting boxes out to people uh, and then it crosses over in about two weeks time we then start collecting them the filled but yeah I've been to loads of schools um, dropping off the the not these ones um, they look like that without yes. the propellers yeah. um, so we've been dropping those in um, and then doing talks um, I'll be doing a talk later on to the school here Wonderful. at 12 o'clock Excellent. So again, it's 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 all about really just yeah. raising awareness, isn't it? And and yes. are the schools that you're talking to, Adam, are they engaging with it? They are. Um, it's everywhere I go, people love the project. It's just a matter of reminding, uh, and then doing a few updates because um, there's certain things you can put in, like you could put in a solar-powered calculator, whereas sometimes um, the students will be thinking, well, maybe maybe not oh, yes, electrical. Yes, I thought about that. So just yeah. updating. And, yes, of yeah. giving new ideas to go into the box. Exactly. So that's, yes. that's a good one, actually, isn't it? So what yes. about wind-up radios? Yeah, that's Something good. Like that. Yeah, wind-up radios. An amazing thing to put in that are really, really cheap. Um, and now this sounds like an irony. Is <laughs> a solar-powered torch. Now, oh, don't yes. get me wrong. <laughs> you charge yeah. it during the day, um, yeah. and it, it shines at night. And you can get tiny ones. I wish I'd brought one. They're about that big. Yes. Um, and they've got. A little LED and a small solar panel and it will trans it transforms not only a child's life but a family's life just that little light um, at night you know maybe to be able to read yes, you know just read or whatever yeah just, just to see just for safe just a nip to just the loo safety, or nip down yes. the road you, yes. you know all those amazing all those possibilities are opened up by that we a take tiny, for granted yeah. LED really? and I think a lot of companies do them as giveaways where you join up and they'll mm. they'll give you a free keyring with a solar torch yes so, yeah, yeah, that's great. Oh, that's brilliant. But you can't have any liquids, can you, in the boxes no at liquids. all? No um, liquids. So, um, yeah. so as long that pretty much is, <laughs> you know, that's that's just one of the things I know you can't put in there. Yes. But you've so you've been collecting the boxes. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, we've been collecting them here at Big Centre TV, um, yeah. and you're giving your talks. But I yes. wanted to talk to you about because we spoke about Operation Christmas Child and what that actually is yes. but Samaritan's Purse is actually the charity where Operation Christmas Child comes under so exactly tell me about that right well Operation Christmas Child is a project of Samaritan's Purse um, and Samaritan's Purse is in the UK and international so on a global scale Samaritan's Purse run other projects um, one of them is called Turn on the Tap um, and there's another one called Raising Families um, those two projects uh, start after the shoebox appeal. So you can imagine um, you make your contact through your local partners in the countries. You distribute the shoeboxes to kids that really need them. But then you've had that introduction. You can then start to ask the questions to the communities, how's it looking with your water and sanitation? And a lot of the time there are problems. And these water, uh, sanitation, um, one of the, it's one of the main factors that keeps people in extreme poverty. Uh, without water, you can't. You don't have your health, and you mm. can't grow good crops. 
We do take so, water for granted yeah. because we have clean potable water that comes out of air yes. taps. Yes. But of course, not everybody, and even in European countries, Adam, that yeah. they don't have that facility. And, we, and I think, do you think we take it for granted? I think we do. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd be shocked if I turn on the tap one day and there was nothing there, uh, and it, I knew it was permanent. Um, you know, you start to worry, and and it's a it's a situation that a lot of children are in every day they don't know where clean water is coming from so that's one of the projects that um, uh, Samaritan's Purse run mm. as well as a shoebox appeal uh, the other one's raising families mm. um, that's particularly strong in Africa and it's literally about going into a community and finding out what they need that's missing to help them get their way out of po poverty uh, and I saw firsthand uh, a really good example in Zimbabwe so can I tell you about that one? Do, tell me the story. <laughs> well, in Zimbabwe, there's a small Samaritan's Purse office that's set up each year to do the admin for the shoebox distributions. Um, and the people working there noticed there were, I think it was 13 teenage girls that were sleeping rough in that vicinity. So in, in, in those blocks of town, they were sleeping rough. They had no home. And they started thinking, you know, we need to do something about this to, to, to protect these, these children. And so... Uh, what one of the uh, I'm trying to think what they, one of the partners did is they started looking around at making a product and it, it was a soap product where we get our washing up liquid and we just buy it from the shop. Mm. Well, they had the idea of getting bottles from a supplier, getting um, the different ingredients to make the washing up liquid, combining it, filling the bottles, and then selling it. And it was very successful, so much so that they used the income from making that washing up liquid to pay for a small house, which is now the shelter um, for these oh, these kids. How wonderful yeah. is that? So uh, again, just yeah. small, small yeah. things. And we've got some photographs of I've got of some that. photographs so, of that. So, you know, which we're, we're showing now to our viewers. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it's a wonderful thing when it's just a small kindness, really, yeah. and a small project like that can have such a massive difference. Yes. Do you feel that that's what Operation Christmas Child is, Adam? It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a big project because obviously it's, it goes across the UK, but yeah. it's just a small thing that people can do it that is. can have such an impact on somebody's life. It's, it's the start. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, a couple of months ago, 60,000 shoebox gifts went out to Syrian refugees in the camps. So 60,000. 60,000. And mm. Samaritan's Purse um, have worked with UK government and other governments to, produ to deliver sanitation solutions and um, the, uh, the flat pack uh, accommodation yes. uh, and buildings just to keep things going. Because when a disaster happens, um, like the Nepal situation, that's a disaster. But no one realizes what the true disaster is. It's when sanitation fails. And within a couple of weeks, you have more people dying through hygiene problems than actually in the original mm -hmm. disaster. Um, for example, Samaritan's Purse went in there straight away. Uh, they got the, the sanitation systems in, drainage, um, portable buildings, latrines, very quickly they stopped the disaster becoming ten times worse. Mm, they knocked yes. it in its tracks. But you don't see that because mm. it goes off the yes. news. <laughs> That's right. And of course and because sickness and diarrhea can kill. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you're malnourished anyway, it's yeah. it's, it's a terrible thing. And That's especially right. when you haven't got as you say, got the running water and the yeah. sanitation. Yes. And and do you think Samaritan's Purse are I mean they've been around for how long? How many years have, have well, Samaritan's Purse been in, in the UK, Samarit uh, Operation Christmas Child um, has been running since 1990. Mm. Uh, but Samaritans, I don't actually know the exact mm. date, mm. but it's Samaritans Purse work hand in hand with the Billy Graham um, Evangelistic Society, mm. and so. I believe they've so been. He's been going thirty years. Yeah, but so I don't know Samaritan's no, Purse itself. No. But it's it's an <laughs> yeah. organisation that people perhaps you know don't don't know too much about. But when yes. you have Operation Christmas Child, yeah. that, that it then brings more people to support them. It does. It, it, it's a very public um, project, mm. um, Operation Christmas Child. But it's a bit like an iceberg where we see the surface work going on. Um, yeah, so we see the boxes that we we've do. got here and what goes in them, but yes. we don't see what happens yeah. after that. There's a lot going on and th that's why I'm a part of it because I believe um, as a charity it, it, it it's ticking all the boxes and it's really delivering vital help to people mm. that need it. Now tell us about this helicopter looking Christmas <laughs> child box that I have on my table. Yeah, okay, well I've seen some unusual shoe Very boxes. Very innovative I say. <laughs> yeah, and just to have a bit of fun yes. um, when going to schools to collect. Yes. You know, why send a shoebox through um, <laughs> through the normal channels when you can fly it there? Yes, that's so right. what that is, is a, 
a shoebox that yeah. can fly under its own power. Wonderful. Well, it obviously, it won't go across That's the great. world, but it's just a bit of fun. But it's just a bit of fun. Just to raise awareness. Absolutely. And, yeah. and again, we've got a little video that we're going to show to <laughs> yeah. show that to show. But again, it just is a way of engaging, really, en yeah. engaging with the people, engaging with children, particularly yes. would 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 like that. Yes. And um, again, just to be a bit innovative really that's what, you, well, this that's is what you said innovation and we saw innovation several years ago when plastic shoe boxes started coming in and they're actually very useful um, so you can use a normal shoe box um, but you can also get plastic rectangular containers like sometimes they're cd yes, holders and yes stuff. and if you use that as a shoe box then the child has something that they have that's yes. more durable so you can use those if somebody yeah. wanted to use those you could you could actually use those yes and also you've got your own shoe boxes that yes. the operation christmas child have now produced that's right where, where can people get those those, if you want individual ones, um, Big Centre TV reception, mm -hmm. and certain shoe zone stores have them as part of a, an outreach. Mm -hmm. um, if you want them in larger quantities, you can buy them because they cost a lot of money pr to yes, produce. Of course, they're sold, yes. um, and they're sold in fifties and hundreds okay, on so. the Entertainer Toy Store. Right. Um, so if, you know, if you want to do lots for the school, so you can go on there onto their website and, buy, and then you can purchase yeah. them. Because shoe boxes, again, it's a it's a, a thing where <laughs> we always used to have shoes in shoe boxes, yes. but now a lot of outlets they actually take the shoe boxes away and you yeah, can't and you actually can't get, get them. them. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that's a really was that why they came up with that idea? Because they is. suddenly realised it, it is, and they're also a standardised size because um, you can get twelve of the this type of shoe box in a carton for distribution. Whereas with other shoe boxes, you can get between eight and fourteen. Yes, because they could be all sorts of shapes and big. sizes. Yeah. So it just makes it very efficient. And so I always say, um, if you're going to do a shoe box gift, make it roughly that standard size, and it just helps with logistics yes, later on. The other side. They still and get the big. Yes, ones. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and when you and when you're yeah. um, working in the warehouses, Adam, what's the? Yeah. I, mean, I should imagine they're sort of gearing up now, aren't they? For, they are. This for, is what's happening. This is what's. So tell us what happens in the warehouses. Right in the warehouses, um, loads of lanes get it set up. There's there'll be there's a Solly Hall and a Walsall warehouse, and there's other ones in Birmingham. There's quite a few. Um, and the idea is, you set up lanes. The lanes are generally for age groups. So as the shoe boxes come in, which is what will happen in the next week or so, yes. they come in on the lorry. They come in on the lorry. And then they're sorted into lanes of boy, girl, and the age groups. You know, two to four, four to nine, etc. Um, and then they just go along, and the the volunteers just check to make sure everything's yes. safe so they don't take anything out no do they? no they um, just check to make sure they haven't got any liquids right. in and make sure there's no sharp objects that's right. i imagine is that yes, right exactly and no yes. war related toys yes, as that's well that's right yes you said um, about that and then they go along sometimes they're topped up they're never it's called respecting the gift so we don't take things out but what we'll do is top up. Um, so if it's something, it doesn't look quite yeah, as say, full. Yeah, say someone hasn't put a toothpaste in and yes. they've got a spare one, yeah. then you can, you they'll can pop put that, that in. in. Excellent. And local companies, obviously, um, when they want to help, they'll provide tubs of things. So like, there could be a tub of toothpaste, yes. a tub of pens soaps, pens, and those will all be on the checking line. And so if Excellent. anything's missing, it can get put in. Wonderful. Yeah. And then obviously they, then they get sent out. Yeah. Well, it's been great to see you and good luck with that lovely flying box. <laughs> that looks amazing. Yeah. And come back again and join us and let us know we'll how do. you're getting on. Right, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it. We're going to take a quick break, but stay with us and we'll come back in just a minute. to Cuppa TV. Now let's talk vintage. I'm joined now by two ladies who make vintage clothes and accessories their passion. Let's welcome Nikki and Rachel from Vintage Vanity. Ladies, hello. Hi. Is it like a song? Hello. <laughs> How lovely. So Nikki, you're the owner of uh, Vintage Vanity and Rachel, obviously in your beautiful Thank dress you. today, well I say, so you obviously you're working with, with Nikki. But let's, let's yeah. start. So yeah. Nikki, where did this all begin for you? Well, very strangely really, uh, I came back to Starport because my father's Italian, my mother is Scottish, as the accent tells you, and I've been living in Italy wow. on and off. And I came back to Stourport sorting out my son and daughter. And, was this um, just recently? Was this in the a last year, few about years? About a year ago, yeah. And uh, I w went into this vintage shop, this shop that I saw this beautiful black uh, 1950s dress, gold, hand-painted. And I asked the lady if she would keep it for my daughter. And the lady said, oh, no, no, can't do that. Sorry, selling the shop. And I said, oh, God, that's really sad because it's too expensive mm -hmm. to just buy if she doesn't like it. And as I was going out, she said, well, actually, she said, I probably will be here next week because I think the sale's fallen through. And I said, oh. And somehow, madness, yes. <laughs> I said, really? Is it still for sale? She said, yes. Two weeks later, I was standing in the shop. I bought it. <laughs> Insanity. 
My partner said to me, did you get the dress? I said, um, um, I bought the shop. I bought the shop. <laughs> As you do. As you do. <laughs> so it literally was a, a spur of the moment. Was really, yeah. yeah. No regrets. How wonderful. So. I was no going regrets. to say, any regrets? No, 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 no. So no. that was just over a year ago. It thinking. was, was yes. Right? We've moved to larger premises now, wow. which is, is fabulous because we've got space in yes. Stourport. We can, we're able to have a, a real good look at the yes. dresses when you so come is in. Is that important that people, when they come into the store, you know, to, to actually view and pick yeah. and feel? The dresses definitely yeah. definitely if you can imagine when you go in and there's everything coming on top of you yes. and you've got all these there's such an array of color mm. in the vintage clothes you just see masses and masses yes. of material so what you really want is is to be able to take your time pick your way through mm. things we do something called girls world where it allows between six and ten a group of six or ten ladies together we we'll give you a glass of Prosecco, some little nibbles, close the shop, and you can play with the clothes. So that yeah. way you actually get the feeling and, and mm. what you really like. You know, vintage is... is yes, I mean, mm. Rachel, let's just talk about you. So, Rachel, how did you get to know Nikki? Um, it was through my mother. Um, she was doing some uh, sewing work for Nikki um, because vintage clothes, you know, they, they need a bit they of do. TLC. Ten, that's that, absolutely. Yes, and uh, I've, I've always liked vintage. I've always liked... You know the times of the dinner dances when I used to see my mum going out in these elegant dresses, and Nikki's shop was just like it was an Aladdin's cave. And <laughs> this this move to bigger premises, it really shows off everything. So it's tell us about boring. what you're wearing today. What year? What year is this? Or perhaps Nikki, you talk us through uh, what, what, yeah, what Rachel's wearing. This today. little cotton dress is a 1950s, mm. very tightly belted. Doesn't have the full underskirt underneath it, um, but it's very. Would it, would it normally have? In it the could 50s? Have. It have. It depends if you were wearing it. To go out shopping, right. you wouldn't wear it with the, with the underskirt. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were going to party at night, yes. you would have the fuller the underskirt. The big skirt, yes, the yes, big yes, underskirt. Right. So Rachel is obviously she's going out for tea or lunch yes. uh, in in this outfit. Um, the fur, which is controversial nowadays, mm. because people say, "Oh my God, is it yes. real?" Yes, it's real because vintage, because in in those days it, it was real fur. If you're looking yes. to actually capture the mood, the you vintage. have to have the yeah yes. that, the, the vintage mood. And you've got, I mean, it looks so comfortable and it looks so elegant. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, does it make you feel that yeah. you want to sort of, I don't know, sit up and yeah, you do, you develop almost like a persona, yeah. um, you know, that you're it's it's very elegant and yes. you, you you kind of and you feel that yeah, you, you feel a bit it. more ladylike because mm. nowadays it's all a lot of it's for comfort yes. and you know sometimes you need a bit of reminding you know that yes. you are you know a lady a lady and, and your beautiful hat as well and again was that classic of that era yeah very the, that. there's quite a variety of hats that that um, they always wore hats I mean they wore hats gloves and shoes and handbag that was your mainstay if all those were good mm. then the outfit was came almost second if you can think that way and, and it, in that time as well it was almost um, you know if you if you have to have your hat and your gloves you couldn't a lady wouldn't go out of the house no 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 would not they without without the, without the hat and the gloves they had beautiful gloves mm. they had all different shapes and sizes yes I mean these are the, the a lot of the time is uh, they're just the little crocheted gloves but they're so hard to come by now and but when you look at the sizes look at the stitching yeah I mean, and this is tiny incredible. this one as well yes. if you look at the tiny stitching I can fit my hand in there yes I've got very small hands, so I might be able to fit my hand ah, in there. Ah, you're one of the lucky ones. Yes, then. I have. But just again, persevere, persevere. You'll but get it, there. Again, just even just putting on Mate. a glove. Well, if you look at your lovely outfit, you've got a beautiful blue dress. Yeah. It's, it's really very lovely that yes. dress. But when you put this on, yes. you're instantly starting yes. to look more dressed That's and right. more vintage. It is, and, and you know, the hat. I mean, you, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So when when you sort of choose outfits, do you, was that the thing in the fifties? Yes. Let's just talk fifties for the minute. Did you used to choose the whole outfit? You would never just buy no. a dress. No, you would, you would buy have everything. to buy everything. It was shoes as well. Yeah, it wasn't a throwaway society either. Mm. So when they bought a dress, the dress was for the season. So they would consider that season, what, how are they going to adopt and adapt the dress to the different mm. um, things that they were going to. So yes. there would be hats, there would be, the, perhaps as well, with this pink hat here uh, for the daytime, but for the evening they might that just wear swap. a little, yeah, they could yes. swap it for a, just a little uh, cloche hat, you know, with, yes. a, with a bit of a, a feather on yeah. it or something yes. like that. And I mean, it, does it feel comfortable to wear? It does, it yeah. does actually. It's would you wear that? 
out, do you? Wear I that would. Out? Yeah, mm. it's it's something a little bit different when you go out. You're not going to see another person in the same mm. dress. It 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 defines yes. you a bit more, and you feel a bit more. You know. Um, that is the wonderful thing about vintage because yeah. there's only mm. one usually That's or right. two at the, now at the most. Definitely. Yes. Yes. But they, they, they handmade them. Then this dress has been altered. Uh, when when I had it originally, it was a, a tiny, tiny, tiny yes, dress. Yes, because the other thing was that people were a lot smaller mm. then. And which is fine. Slimmer. Which is fine. But mm. when I actually started to look at it, I realised that somebody had taken it in oh. and it wasn't original. So we took it back to the original and it fits. A night it fits a lovely figure, like yes. like Rachel's, you know, yeah. a little bit fuller figure, and it's it's lovely because yeah. when these the tiny tiny ones, yes. there's there's no bust, there's yes. no weight, the waists are minuscule, yes. you know, it's we very try difficult. It. <laughs> <laughs> Breeding we in. See that. We see that. So <laughs> now you've got uh, other. So that's yeah. the 1950s. Definitely. Uh, oh, and you've got the handbag as well. Yeah. So oh, I mean, yeah. again, and this is a classic vintage. Yeah. Handbag. Yeah. These these handbags. This this is could be even earlier. Really, this crocodile handbag. That's the other thing with vintage. It is quite difficult to de decide yes, what, what date, date everything is. Yes. But you go for the look, the overall look. Mm. But these, uh, again, it's crocodile, it's real. It, this one actually has a tiny little piece missing. Yes. But you're, you can see with, in the overall look, but it just, it just suits. finishes. Absolutely. Mm. That's right. Now, at the moment, I mean, we've got many period dramas on the television, yeah. of course. Mm. And of course, we have Downton Abbey, yeah. um, which is going through the 20s at uh -huh. the moment, isn't it? And you have something you've brought along to show me. Yes. You. And I, I've been looking at it here thinking, what are you going to do? Now, just no. explain what this is. I'm not going to show you this, actually. I'm going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind, can we put this on you? Because okay. I think you look terrific okay. in this. Okay. Would come on, yes, no, absolutely. Okay, come over. I'll shuffle over. <coughs> come over this and join is what me. they so call a cloche hat. A cloche hat. Okay, and it means it's tight against the head. Um, this one is uh, all beading. They used to make them in different felts mm. and different uh, materials. This is from Italy. Okay. But we're going to try right, it and okay. see how you go today. This will be good. This will be great. <laughs> I know you. The you'll things look. I do for cup of tea. I me. know. <laughs> well, I think. All your viewers, I think you How look does that tremendous. Look? I will show my viewers. Boop, 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 what do you think? <laughs> Send me a memo. Ooh. Oh, it just makes you want to yeah. go like this. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it. that feels incredibly comfortable. It is. Now, again, would they wear this in the evening? Yes. Or would this be... No, evening. You wouldn't evening. go shopping in no, something no, 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 like no, no, this, no. but you would wear Dance this for it. the evening. Go. Because yeah. it does, it just makes you want to jingle your head. That's right. That, which is great. I mean, it, it, it complemented the nice, the shorter haircut. That yeah, because they had a very chic haircut here. And we've actually got a blouse there haven't we? Can I? So, no, no, just no, leave it there, that's it. fine, because we'll pick that on camera, okay. but the, um, that's a blouse from the night, from the same era. Yes. yes because it it's quite loose fitting, wasn't Everything. it? Everything, yeah. In the, whereas we've gone from, we, we, that's, uh, it was kind of, 1920s was quite loose, and then we we kind of got tighter and tighter, yeah. didn't we? Well, you did. feel incredibly comfortable. <laughs> it looks I, I will tell you, you look stunning. <laughs> Thank you um, so much. What, what the ladies used to do as well is uh, they, they used to bind themselves so that they could get the dresses would just hang straight just, yes. up and down on wow. them. So, I mean, we went, I, I, I have got underwear from the early 19th centuries right through wow. and some of the stuff, but when you get to the 20s, it's just silk and it just sort of hangs. hangs yes. Know? And the cami knickers just it was just Hang. a very it's hangy beautiful. period, but yes. beautiful. Beautiful. Though. And again, materials was that quite important oh, yeah. with the era? Where did yeah. where did the materials sort of play a big part? Silks were twenties, were yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Silks. Uh, uh, really, materials are, are important for for all mm. kinds of fashion, uh, and you'll find that designers will seek out the unusual mm. and and rare pieces. But in those days. Companies like Horrocks used to make the these type of dresses yeah. with the lovely um, uh, sort of floral pa yes, patterns yes. on them, uh, and I have heard that they're actually starting to remanufacture the material really? because of the popularity. Yeah. Because vintage but has sort of it sparked an interest now, Rachel. I mean, what do you feel, Rachel? Do, do you feel that vintage is sort of making a comeback? It is. It, it, it's, it kind of started in the 90s, where a lot of the students, you know, mm -hmm. sought out you know, sort out clothes that are a little bit different. Mm. And it's it's kind of sparred because now you had Dawn, uh, Dawn Porter that does Dawn the, uh, did, a, did a big show um, about it. Yes. And uh, yeah, a lot of people with, um, you know, with blogs, with fashion blogs, there are a lot of fashion, yes. you know, bloggers and vloggers out there that are using vintage mm. to make themselves stand out. And I mean, as a young lady, why do you think that is? Why do you think vintage has suddenly sort of take, come back again? 
I think with like like Nikki was saying, it's it's very you know mass produced nowadays, very throwaway society. And these pieces, they they're handmade, they're made with love. There are a lot of lot of memories in these pieces, and you know it takes you back to a time that was maybe you know a romantic time mm. of you know in the past and. It's it, there's a lot the of history, it's very different. Yeah. It's not a you know a, a mass produced churned out you know kind of like, you know you know sweatshops. Yes. There's been a lot of things in the press about how they treat the workers. You know there's a lot of love and a lot of quality. A lot of care has been. Yes, put I think into quality and care comes through. You can definitely see the quality and also as well it's quite bespoke because often they because they didn't mass produce you would have a piece that you're not going to see somebody else walking down the street you know in the same piece that's are right you? what they used to do they would make things like a little collars and they would change the whole dress mm. uh, and there is uh, yes and we've got grace kelly sort of grace kelly dress, dress. Yes, just yes, here that's, that's which is shimmering very nicely behind <laughs> you there so again what era was that that would have been 50s as well, as well. Yeah. well. Yeah. so again that very elegant very tight waist yeah very feminine very feminine and fluffy kind yes. of as well you know yes. you were allowed to be a fluffy yes. girl then. and again the gloves would go with absolutely. that absolutely but you've got things like the the, the land girl blouses yes when it in the wartime yeah, show, so things, show yeah. that's just so behind things, you there changed greatly yes uh, look at this was this the way I'll that it, it the hanger. what was the purpose of this well again has to be said. <laughs> if, if I I can't really I like it, it. can I put it on you why not oh, I've had hats on go. today <laughs> hats, you mind that's I'll it, open it here yeah. so we don't spoil Perfect. your hair what they would do is they would wear this with shorts or divided skirts or the corduroy trousers yes uh, but occasionally if they needed to change a dress yes. style Excuse me. No, that's Are fine. You okay there? Yes, that's they fine. They would just pop that over the shoulders like that. Loads of in varieties of colours. And, and it would just that's it. And you would tie it ah. either side here. You see? Oh, how how wonderful. Quite simple. And, again, and it would very change, simple. change your dress. And that you've got do you know, I there think in the and so the, this this sort of era was very um versatile, wasn't uh -huh. it? And had probably be. because it had to be, yes, to exactly, be. Yeah. because of the war. That's right. Women still wanted to be feminine and, and women, mm. but we, we wanted to do something a bit different. So how easy is that? Because you could have just done this to yeah. quite a few different colour you tops. Could, you can run, run them up quite easily <laughs> as well, you know. Yes. But they're actually really rare to get mm. hold of now. And, and, that's, and that's the other thing, isn't it? it, it they are rare, aren't they? It's, it's just a problem because mm. I get them in the shop and I look at them and I think, oh, I don't want them at all. Oh, yes, that's <laughs> you it. Know, so it's really weird. Yes. But, um, yeah. But what do you what do you, what do, you do? do? And I mean, when seamstress, you know, again, you said rare. Mm. Uh, is there a lack of sort of seamstress seamstresses? I should I, say. In, I think in the they're UK actually now. Try, starting now. We're uh, the, 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 we're seeing more. We've seen a huge yeah. sort of surge, haven't we? More really? more people crocheting, knitting, knitting has become sewing. Very, yeah, very popular, crochet work hasn't it? is this again? Yes. This is this takes us up to yes. the nineteen sixties. Let's have a look at this. I'll, I'll leave this, this on. Is, this is the thirties hat. Oh, this is the, this yeah, one. Here. This is the one. Okay. Yeah. There we are. If you look at this in the sixties, I mean. It's and was this, would this have just yes. been all handmade? Hand, handmade, absolutely. I mean, that, the work that's gone into that is just I mean, incredible. When you look at that and you think, wow, it's a pair yes. of trousers. I it's mean, you just... Oh, yeah, oh, that's a pair ah, of trousers. <laughs> we did a fashion yeah. show at Hartlebury Castle yes. last week and one yeah. of the girls wore this Wonderful. with nude underwear and everybody went, oh! <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> but again, but it it's fabulous. just wonderful. Yeah. But look at that waist. I know. Tiny, <laughs> tiny. Now, I've got to ask uh, about mm. the, the dress that we've got hanging ah, up there. Yes. So just tell me about that dress. Right. I got that dress and I looked at it and I played with it and I thought, this is a really odd dress because where the buttons are yes, there. Yes, because you've got two buttons, two buttons in the panel there. Yeah. When you look, I thought it was a pocket. But there's yes. nothing. It's empty. It's void. And I thought, OK. And I waited and I looked and everybody I said, and they went, no, that's strange. Then a little old lady came into the shop and she said, oh, I had a dress like this. And I said, really? What is it? And she says, what do you mean, dear? And I said, well, why have you got the button? She says, oh, my dear, she says, that was a maternity dress. Oh, that's a maternity <gasps> dress. And it made sense because as they yes. got bigger, you they would, moved the buttons. the buttons. It makes perfect sense. Now, well. well. uh, that, that could make a comeback. I think what had happened though, I think what confu was made it confusing was somebody has got a hold of that in the 60s 
Ah, yes. And they've shortened and it. And they've shortened it. Yeah, because so, when you so look, the ears were changed. Hem, oh, I so see. It, it acts. Yeah. But again, that's great because yes. that's what vintage is all about. Yes, it's just changing and things and versatile. Mm -hmm. And do, when you're wearing it, do you wear other sort of? Is there a particular era, Rachel, that you like? It's it's all kinds of eras because you you know in the 70s it was, it was still very glamorous and the yes. 60s it was a Even bit. And this sassy. is wearing. This is lovely to wear. Yeah, it looks I like that. this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can change your era with your mood sometimes because mm. if you want to be elegant, you know, and but classic, you go to the 50s or the 40s. It's all. And especially now, um, the 70s are coming back this yes. winter. You've got caftans and the big felt hats. Yes, yeah, big felt hats are very in fashion yeah. at the moment, aren't they? Again, got, so it's, again, nice it's, it's very, one, it's very yeah. sort of 70s. And again, if um, ha, tell us about this piece behind. Yeah, okay. I brought that particularly because it isn't actually any specific era because it's a Frank Asher jacket. A heavily beaded, so that's sort of from the 60s. Again, and very fashionable at the moment. Very, 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 and very now fashionable. very fashionable. And then you've got the palazzo pants, which are pleated like a pleated skirt, but they're actually they're trousers, pants. but they only come down to about mm. there, uh, which are again sort of 50s. So what happens 40s, 50s? So what if you put the palazzo pants, the francasha together? Together, that makes a an amazing combination. Et voila, you're into the 20s. Yes, yes. Instantly. Yes. And you can wear your cloche, you can wear whatever you want, however you So really you, you can sort of, uh, is it, is it, would it be okay to mix and match, you know, the Absolutely. eras? That, 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 would you, is that what you do, Rachel? Yeah, do well, do especially that? modern with, you know, yes, modern with Yes, because you could put a vintage, vintage top, maybe with a modern pair of trousers Definitely. or a skirt or something or something like that. And mm. um, what do your friends think about you when you go out in there or are they into vintage as well as you no actually they're not they they like <laughs> yeah. the more modern stuff but in a, in a way I get a bit more positive attention because it's because they're the clean lines very elegant lines instead of you know wearing something very scanty mm. you know you get more appreciation you got you it's a very empowering as when you get other women coming up to you and saying you look fabulous, you know, yes. and it makes you feel makes you feel it makes good. you feel good. Yeah. yeah, instead of the wrong kind of attention, yeah. you get the right kind yeah. of attention because people say, "Oh, you look amazing and elegant." It's it's, it's, it's the just right such kind a, of a wonderful thing. Now, interesting because obviously we're in we've got 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. 1970s. Mm -hmm. What about our era, Nikki? Now is there anything is. that we? So you know, in 50 years' time, there'll be somebody sitting here doing this and doing this, and now we're in the, you know the 21st century. Is, are they going to view the, the clothes the same way as we're viewing these beautiful clothes? I don't know because if you think, if you consider all the fashion weeks that there is and, and how a lot of the fashion houses nowadays do um, off the peg, you know, they do the different ranges. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there will be a specific genre for this era. Yes. I'm just interested to see, you know, to Maybe. ask, what do, what do you think, Rachel? Do you think How this is an era where people are going to look back and think, steampunk? I would like to wear something from this think era. steampunk? Yeah, it's, it's hard because mm. nowadays we, we have such a mix, you know, you've got the 70s coming in, coming in, you know, and being, you know, reproduced in mainstream stores. But it's been wonderful to meet you. Thank you so oh, much again you. for bringing thank in you. all these beautiful clothes. And Rachel, thank, thank you. you so much. You're thank absolutely you for having gorgeous. Us. Thank, thank, you. thank you. So that's it for today's show. I might have to keep this. Uh, <laughs> thank you to my guests. Uh, we've got Steve Lawson, Adam, Nikki and Rachel, of course, for joining me on Cuppa TV. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Come back and see me very soon. Bye bye.